Right now is completely focused in WordPress, working plugins, and today he will be talking a little bit about testing as well inside plugins. So the stage is yours. Thank you okay. so much. Okay, thanks. As he said, we're going to talk about uh, testing and mod in particular integration testing. But oh, maybe like that? Wait. <laughs> oh, maybe. Okay. I didn't do like this. Uh, so maybe first I'm going to introduce myself, even if he did it first. Uh, I'm a software engineer at WP Media. That means uh, I'm working mostly with two plugins, which are WP Rocket and Image 5 that are both installed on millions of websites. Uh, what characterizes me the most is like uh, always trying to improve. And so that led me into two notions, which is developer experience. I think that today the code uh, sorry, the machine should always have to serve the developer and not the opposite. Thanks. And uh, so for me, there is always a solution that shouldn't be complex. Then the second notion that led me into is testing. I've always been interested about testing because when you want to have some quality over time, you are obliged to pass by it. And I actually started to write tests for WordPress two years ago when I joined WP Media. Okay, uh, wrong. Okay, so I'm talking about testing, but I didn't define what is testing. So let's start by that. So we are all on the same basis. So when I will use test, I will use it abusively for automated test. Why? Because it's shorter. Testing, it's basically uh, writing some code that asserts that an application has a certain behavior. And as you can see on the side, like what you're going to do is just that you will have some expectation and you're going to compare them with the result from your code to actually try to find some differences and so some potential dismatch that would show you that uh, your code is not behaving as you are expecting. So now that you are knowing what is testing, why you should test. For that, I got one quote from our CEO two years ago. As you can see, he's quite pessimist about testing. And uh, in fact, for him, that was something on the side we, that wasn't that, uh, that really important. And here is another, um, another citation from our CEO. You can notice that now it's today. And that quote is, in fact, a way more positive. An OKR is like a, a KPI. It's something that shows that your company is doing good. So what happened? between these two years, it can be resumed into that. Effective testing, it's something which is hard. You need to answer a lot of questions, and if you answer wrong to any of these questions, you can end up with a bad test, which is a burden or totally useless. So what you need actually is to achieve effective testing, which is hard reward. Because when you reach that point, then the tests are your co-pilot. They are your second brain, and you can rely on them to actually deliver less bug and be sure that you are not regressing in your code. So the objective of that talk is actually to guide you toward effective testing and also to answer the question you're going to ask yourself when you're going to write some test. So for that, I'm going to follow that plan. So basically, first, why testing? That's what I did. Then we're going to look integration and you need test and which one are the best to actually starting testing in your company. Then once we know which test to pick, we're gonna actually know how to test. And finally, I have a couple of usual testing scenarios that you're gonna encounter when you will be writing integration test. So first, let's start with unit versus integration testing. So don't make me lie. If you've got time, write both of them. But here we are in a context, we want to introduce testing into the company. So we don't have the time for both of them, and we have to pick one of them. That's why we have to compare them. If I was a teacher and I was telling you about unit test, I would present it that way. Unit test, it's at the class or the method level. So you have at least one test per method or per class. It's the most isolated. That's why it's called unit 
because you are at the lowest point. It's developer-oriented, written by developer for developers. That's easy, you don't have to learn another language. They are easy to set up, and so due to all of that, if I were a teacher, I would tell you they are the first one you should learn. For integration testing, it's a bit less shiny. You know, it's at the feature level, so it's a bit more abstract. We don't know what we should really do. It's business-oriented. For a teacher, business, it's complex. You know, he's at school, he never went in the company. And finally, it's complex to set up. What is the issue with that? The issue are not the fact what the teacher told you are true. The issue is the context. We aren't at school anymore. We are in a company. We are not with a teacher. We are not with a student. We are with CEO and manager that decide. And what they care about is rentability and on schedule. And these are the people that you're going to need to convince. So let's look at unit tests and integration tests again, but this time through their eyes. Unit tests, they are the level of the class or the method. So they are a way easier to break. If you are changing anything in your application that's going to break some unit tests, you have to re-implement them, and so you will have low productivity. They are in the developer language. CEO, manager, it's business people. For them, that's Chinese. There is a lot of tests. A lot of tests, to their eyes, it's a lot of work. And finally, the last point is that when you have some tests, and it's unit test, you have to create the test cases by your own. But again, sometimes you're going to waste. Then for the integration test, it's a way more shiny. It's more abstract, so you can actually achieve a higher productivity. You won't be breaking tests when you are changing anything in your code. It's business language. Business language, business people, I think you get. We have a reduced number of tests, so that means less tests to maintain, less work to their eyes. And finally, the test cases are based on the project definition, which means it's not up to the developer to waste time on it. It's already given when you are scoping the project. So as you may guess, if you are in a company, I would advise you to start with integration testing. Why? Because you achieve higher productivity, you have business language, so you can communicate with other people on your company on what you are doing. You have a reduced number of tests. Reduced number of tests mean like less time to maintain them. And you have a feature that you can have, which is uh, not possible with unit tests, is that you can ensure that the feature is done and you can track it. Like if later on you have some uh, regression, it's going to be indicated by the, unit, uh, by the integration test. But with the unit test, that's something we can't actually assert. So then, once we know which test we're going to pick, the next thing is introduce it to the company. So for that, I would tell you first, when you propose it, try to limit the scope. Simply because when you limit the scope, you limit the risk for them. So if anything is going wrong, then that won't be a catastrophe for the company. Then, don't forget you are talking to business people. Business people, they are not developers, and so you need to see tests through their eyes and highlight potential gain through their eyes, not the eyes of the developer. Then the next thing is learn to wait. Like when you are trying to convince someone, don't expect that this person is going to change in my, his mind right now. We just wait a couple of time, like if you put a seed in his head and let it time to grow. And finally, make baby steps. That's important because like, when you're going to introduce something new, you're always going to make a mistake. And actually, if you do baby steps, you're going to be able to have a reduced um, impact from your mistake. And that's going to help you actually to have a positive overall. Because all the things you succeed before are going to actually compensate the failure you had. Know that we know to introduce the test. We know that we're going to pick integration test. Let's see how to test. First, set up the environment. So for setting up the environment, I create an article on Medium, and you can actually follow it so you can set up your environment. I won't extend more on that, just because for me, that's not where we have the value. The value is more on the step you're going to iterate on. Like setting up the environment, you're going to do it once. So 
You just have to follow the step and that's it. So now what? We have our environment. The first thing is what we should test. There is a sentence I love to hate. It's, did you test your code? Why at this sentence? It's because as you saw at the beginning, testing is actually comparing your expectation to the code. So if your expectations are based on the code, then you're gonna test nothing. And to actually assert that we are testing our expectation, we actually have a tool that's called acceptance criteria. Nothing complex, but just a simple sentence asserting of an atomic behavior from the application. So you can see on the side, you have a couple of examples. And as you can see, that's nothing really complex, but that ensure you that you are not testing your code, you are testing your expectation from the project. And the good thing about that, it's when it's set up in the company, it's not to you, the developer, to actually write them, it's to the person that is developing, uh, sorry, that is scoping the project. So that's not a job for you. Then once we have our acceptance criteria, we will have to actually implement them. So for that, we need a workflow. The workflow I would advise is test-driven development. It's something really trendy. I think you already heard about it, but it's also really dogmatic. So if you start to apply all of the rules from TDD from the start, you're gonna be lost. So we have a mantra at WP Media. It's actually better done than perfect. Why that? Because ROM didn't build in one day, and so will your testing skills. You need to learn gradually and don't apply the rule from TDD blindly. You need to actually understand what's the most important. And for that, we need to come back to the TDD essential. What are the essential? Three rules. It doesn't matter how you apply them, you just need to apply them. You need first to write your test before your code. You remember I told you it's really important to test expectation and not the code. A good way to not actually test the code is to not have written it. The second rule is to make sure you have failed, uh, sorry, make sure that your test failed before writing the code. Why this? For a small project, it doesn't really make a sense, but when the projects start to grow, in fact, it's possible that you won't be able to track what is done on the project. For example, on WP Media, sometimes we have issues that solve over once and we are not aware about it. And it's to tackle that problem that you need to make sure that the test is failing. Because if it's not failing, then you are doing useless work for your company. Then the last rule is to make sure that all tests are passing after you finish writing the code. That might look simple, but actually that's what helps us to track what is important inside uh, our project. And later on, make us sure that while refactoring, we are not breaking something that matters. Once we have our workflow, so with TDD, we can actually narrow down to the test itself. So a test, it will always follow that pattern. It's called the AAA framework. First, you need to arrange. That means in that first step, you're gonna put the plugin in a certain state that uh, actually is always reproducible. So if you run twice the same test, it should always arrive in that uh, state. So the next step act will always behave the same way. Then the next step add, it's actually just to run the logic you want to test, nothing complex. And the last part is assert. And in that part, you're gonna verify that the plugin is in the state you expected. And if it's not the case, then you're gonna fail. Once we got that, I want to come back to acceptance criteria and talk quickly about Gherkin. Gherkin is a pseudocode language that would help you actually to make sure quickly that you are writing acceptance criteria that are complete. Why? Because there is a mapping between the AAA framework and some keyword in Gherkin. And so at the end, you can assert that the acceptance criteria is complete because if one keyword is missing, then that means that your acceptance criteria is wrong. So now that we know how to test, let's look at some usual testing scenarios. The first, no, sorry, the scenario I pick are not exhaust, exhaustive, but like uh, as I have only 25 minutes, I try to talk the most important one. 
The first one is about duplicating code between your code base and your testing code. Like often when you're gonna test, you're gonna have to rewrite exactly the same code. And for that, there is actually a little trick, which is uh, all of that logic that's gonna be duplicated, you have to put it inside filters and actions. And that way you will be able to actually reuse that action and filters inside your code base and your testing, uh, uh, your testing code without having a duplication. Then the second uh, scenario is about controlling filter value. When you're gonna write integration test, that's nearly the most important. Like controlling the filter values is actually what gonna help you to decide that the logic gonna go in that way or another. So it's something really important. And the next uh, scenario, in fact, is a bit more concrete uh, usage of that. So the solution is quite easy, in fact, for this one. It's with the library I give you uh, to build the environment. We have actually inside the test scenario, uh, like a way to uh, create a, a callback for uh, that event just by adding an annotation on top of it. And then the return value gonna be the return value from your callback. And that way you will be able to control the different filters and make the flow go the way you want. Then, as I told you, the next case is a more concrete case of actually mocking a filter to control uh, its value. And it's for external API call. For example, you are calling Stripe, you are calling um, uh, PayPal, something like that. That's some API, you can't control the, the return value. So for that, you can actually, inside your code, use the WP remote request uh, function and mock the filter uh, pre-HTTP request inside your test. So then the value you're gonna return from that callback gonna be the return, uh, the return value from your API. And that way you won't be calling any more the API and instead the value that's gonna be returned is the value from your test case. And finally, the last uh, scenario is about isolating the callback. That happens often because when you are testing, sometimes you are not the only logic attached to that event. And so, for example, for notices, that's hard actually to test notices because WordPress already attached its own notices. So again, with the library I gave in the environment, it's quite easy. You just have to use an annotation upper uh, your test case, and that way you will have only your logic running, and that way you will be able to actually assert that your assertion has only what you want. So that's it. Uh, like uh, I hope that uh, that talk helped you to have a, a testing workflow. It answers a question that uh, you're gonna ask yourself when you're gonna build like a, a real, uh, real life uh, testing uh, workflow. And uh, remember, uh, always start by uh, integration tests. Use acceptance criteria to not test your code, but test your expectation. If you need a workflow to actually uh, implement your acceptance criteria, use TDD, but keep it simple and use AAA to build your test and that way you're gonna be sure that your test is gonna be effective. If you are interested about integration testing and in fact all the good practices that we have at WP Media in general, we are launching a little framework, Launchpad, so feel free to check about it. And uh, yeah. If you have any questions, that's the time. Thank you, Cyril. Questions? Preguntas? Anyone? Yeah. Hi. At what stage do you start planning the tests? Because after we write code, uh, wait for someone. Yeah, for integration test, actually, uh, as we uh, are planning uh, the, okay, I can go back that way. Uh, we are planning the test at the moment. We are uh, planning the acceptance criteria. Uh, at that level, it's at the moment we are scoping the project. 
So actually, it's not before developing. It's really at the moment we are with the client, and the client going to say, OK, uh, the application going to behave that way. And so that at that moment, we're going to plan the test. Then there's going to be an overall of uh, acceptance criteria we're going to add, which is with the QA, when we're going to have some scenario which are not planned by the client. But uh, actually, uh, normally, everything should be between these two stages. And if you forget something, of course, feel free to actually add some later. More questions? I was wondering, how do you test a plugin in combination of WordPress? Is it within the site itself, or is the plugin separately in a folder with version control, and there's like a best script installing WordPress? Uh, like we are testing the plugin inside WordPress, uh, because, in fact, when we are creating the environment, we are using a WordPress environment. And so that's going to set up the WordPress for us. Uh, for example, for Dulipty Rocket, uh, we got like uh, some setup where we are adding also every other plugins we need for third-party compatibilities. So we are testing it inside the WordPress environment to answer the question. More questions? Yeah. So do you feed the environment with live data or do you have a, like mock data? Uh, like how we are testing with uh, Drip Rockets, we are actually adding uh, some uh, data inside the feature for our code, inside, inside the scenarios. Uh, so we are not testing with the live data because the live data are not reliable. That's not the job of uh, integration testing. We have some over tests for that later on. But for integration tests, we want it to be always the same output. That's why we use templates, and they won't change. One more? I have. Yeah, OK. So I'm a huge fan about testing. Yeah. So in nowadays, we have a lot of TDD, like you mentioned on your presentation, but there is also another side of the house which is BDD. Okay, is yeah. there anything that you can, any use case that you can bring regarding BDD? Because everything right now is front end, right? And if you have a web application, if you forget a little bit the back end, there are a lot of things on the front end that needs to match with things that we need to test. Uh, yeah, you are meaning about the UI? Yeah. Uh, actually, when we are doing integration testing at WP Media, we are uh, actually creating a level with a filter on hooks, which is under the UI. So you can actually remove the UI, that's going to be tested another way. And uh, we are testing only on the PHP part, so we don't have to actually mess up with the UI. Framework that you can uh, mention, like a BDD framework testing? like. For example, for BDD framework, you have a Behat, mm -hmm. which is going to help you with the Gherkin thing, and uh, also with uh, in more general something that we call a Concumber, which, has a, which is uh, actually a way to implement and uh, create code from uh, the, Gherkin, uh, the Gherkin language. Any other? No? OK. Cyril, thank you. Yeah. Thanks.